Music theory is the backbone of music and enables you to understand and learn any music. And the basics of music theory can be broken down into three parts. Melody, harmony and musicality. Today I'm going to talk you through each of these concepts from the very beginning so that you have a better understanding of how music theory is used to make music and can be used to understand music. So let's talk about the first of these three pillars which is melody. A melody just means the tune or a series of single notes and in this context we're going to talk about all the things needed to make a melody. So the first thing you are going to want to know is the notes. Music labels notes using letters of the alphabet and we only use the first seven letters A, B, C, D, E, F and G. When you get to G you just start the alphabet again so you get a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. On a piano, that's all the white notes. However, there are also all these black notes which we need to know. These are called sharps and flats. The word sharp just means one up. So a C sharp is one up from C, or an F sharp is one up from F. The word flat means one down, so an E flat is one down from E, or an A flat is one down from A. This means that all the black notes have two names, because a C sharp is the same note as a D flat, because it's one up from C, but it's also one down from D. There are two places where there isn't a sharp or flat between the letters, and that is between E and F, there is no black key there, and between B and C, there is also no black key there on the piano. However, because the word sharp just means one up, you still can play an E sharp. For example, that would just be the same key as an F, because that is one up from E. That takes care of how notes work, but that's not the only thing you need. The next part is something called scales. Scales are a set of notes that you use to make a piece of music. In music, the most common type of scale and the best place to start is with something called a major scale. Every major scale has all of the letters in it, A, B, C, D, E, F and G. But different scales have different sharps and flats in them. The important thing to note here is that each scale only has one type of each letter in it. So for example, you won't have a scale that has both an F and an F sharp in it. You will only see scales with one version of an F in it. So knowing this, the most obvious place to start is to know the scale that has all the normal letters without any sharps or flats. And this is called a C major scale. A C major scale has no sharps or flats in it and just uses all the white notes on the piano. Because it's called a C major scale, if you wanted to play the scale, you would usually start on a C. So the notes would be C, D, E, F, G, a, B, and then you are back to another C. There are 12 different combinations of notes that you can find that make major scales, but for this video I will give you just one more example as well as the C major scale, and that is a G major scale. So a G major scale also has mostly normal notes in it, except for an F, which is an F sharp instead. So the scale of G major is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then you get back to another G. When you are playing a melody, the notes in the melody will be made up of notes from a scale. And if you know the scale you are going to be using, then you are able to narrow down which notes you need to play in a piece of music. The second pillar is harmony. Harmony is all about how notes work together. The reason that harmony is so important is because that is what makes music sound happy or sad or big or small and I'm going to show you how. But first, we need to talk about something called intervals. Now, in music, intervals means the distance between two notes. So to talk about this, I'm going to use a C major scale, because as we now know, that scale has no sharps or flats. If we play a C at the same time as a D, this interval is called a second, because C is note number one in the scale, and D is the second. If we play a C at the same time as an E, this is called a third because C is the first note in the scale and E is the third. This pattern is the same for any note in the scale. A C and an A is a sixth because C is the first note and A is the sixth. Each of these combinations of notes has a different quality of sound. For example, a C to a D sounds more tense than a C to an A because they are closer together. If you play a C to a C, this is called an octave because they are eight notes apart and oct means eight. There are several different intervals that sound stronger and weaker in a scale. 
And one of the strongest intervals is a fifth, which would be a C and a G in this case. These two notes make up the foundations of most chords in music. A chord in its simplest form is just more than one note at the same time. If we use the other scale we discussed before, which was G major, a fifth would be G to D, because if G is the first note in the scale, D is the fifth. These two notes sound very strong together, but they don't have a lot of character. They sound quite naked and emotionless. So to fix this, you can also add the third note in the scale, which has more character, and I will show you how. The chord that we've just formed is a type of chord called a triad, which is made up of the first, the third, and the fifth note of a major scale. So for a C major scale, the notes would be C, E, and G. The interval of a third has more character because we can do a few things with it. In a normal major scale, the third is actually called a major third, so a C to an E is a major third. However, if we make that E an E flat instead, which is one down from E, then we get something called a minor third. A major third sounds nice, positive, happy, good. And a minor third sounds sad, negative, or maybe unhappy. And if we play the triad with the first, third, and fifth note again, with a normal major third, you can hear it has a different quality of sound to the minor version of the same triad. Major and minor triads make up most music, and the great thing is, because there is only 12 different scales, there is also only 12 different major and minor triad chords. So if you are just starting out learning some music theory, get your scuba suit on and get yourself on a deep dive into major scales and triad chords. I'm very ashamed of myself for that metaphor. If you are finding this video valuable, be sure to like the video and consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thanks! If you are a beginner learning the piano and you want to get better at sight reading and reading music in general, there is 22 free sight reading exercises available in the description for you to download, which is from my sight reading book. The full book includes 470 exercises which go through step by step to give you the proper foundations in sight reading music. The last pillar to the basics of music theory is musicality. Now, musicality is just about making things sound good making music more like music rather than just a load of notes. And it's the reason that you might see pianists doing this. So there are a few different music theory concepts that can help with this, and we've already kind of covered one with major and minor triads and how they sound different. However, another one is something called dynamics. Now, dynamics in music is at the root of it just about the volume that you play the music. And in music, there are two main dynamics, forte and piano. Forte means loud or strong in Italian, and piano means quiet or soft in Italian. In a piece of music, you can see these on the page written as F or P, and that tells you what you should be playing, loud or soft. However, obviously, we can be a bit more specific. So if we add an M in front of either of these letters, you get mezzo forte or mezzo piano. And the way I like to describe these is as middle loud or middle quiet. And these cover the middle ground between loud and soft. There is also fortissimo, which is FF, and that's really loud, or pianissimo, which is PP, and that's really quiet. You can add more Fs or more Ps to get even more loud or quiet if needed, but most pieces of music use from PP, pianissimo, to FF, fortissimo. As well as dynamics, we can get even more specific about how music should be played based on what is going on in the music. And this is called shaping and phrasing the music. There are a few different concepts to note here, but this one is a bit more down to interpretation than anything else. And I would normally say, if you can sell it to me, then I will buy it. Meaning, if you can justify to a listener why you are playing something the way you are, so that it makes sense in terms of storytelling, then that's great. So the first concept is expansion, and this is where the music is expanding. You have some parts of the music going down, and you have other parts going up. In music, this is called contrary motion because they are moving in opposite directions. If the music is moving in contrary motion, you might want to expand with it, so make it louder or broader. If the music is contracting, you do the opposite and go inward. You might want to make it quieter and more thin sounding. If the music is generally ascending, that might be a sign to make the music 
feel like it's climbing by increasing the tension by getting louder, or it might be a sign to make it dainty and like it's in the clouds. If the music is getting lower generally, then that might be a sign to descend and soften the music, or it might be a sign to make it sound more chaotic and boomy. These things are up to you to think about depending on the context, and then you can make some decisions. But if the music is moving, you're going to want to shape it somehow so that it doesn't sound emotionless. And that's what makes music theory so fun. It gives you the ability to be able to make decisions and give music some meaning, as well as giving you a complete understanding of what is happening. Another thing that you need to know if you want to learn music properly is the basics of reading music. And there are a few things that I think that you might not know about reading music, which is exactly what this video is about. So head on through and I will see you there.